Hello folks and welcome to ISTM 320 week one day two the online edition. Uh, I have recorded this in place of our normal class session today um, as a number of folks informed me that um, this little football game that was happening would cause mass chaos, destruction, and panic throughout all of College Station and that the smartest thing to do would be to uh, give my students another option for class today. So I decided to move the entire class online um, to make sure that folks have reviewed this material properly. I'm giving you fair warning that there will be a, a short and relatively easy pop quiz um, about what I've covered in these videos. Uh, I've broken up today's lesson into three videos. Um, this is not a, a, my preferred way of, of delivering this material. It was designed to be presented in class, such as this first slide. Fun facts with Dr. Mike. Um, I would normally uh, show you this slide and ask if anybody in the audience um, knows who is to be buried here, which I'm guessing nobody would. Um, if you did, cool. If not, that's, that's to be expected. Uh, so this is a, a tomb in St. Louis Cemetery Number 1 in New Orleans. And this is a 9-foot, can't really tell from the picture, a pyramid tomb that carries the Latin phrase omni ab uno. For all of my uh, Latin-speaking uh, students out there in the audience, uh, you, you know that that means everything from one. Uh, I also don't know if anybody actually learns Latin uh, these days, but uh, if you do, <laughs> uh, you, you will know how that translates. So the grave underneath is currently unoccupied, but some have speculated that this famous celebrity is to be buried there. Uh, I'll let you guess who that is in your head. One, two, three. Bet you didn't guess this guy, or you did. Either way. Um, it's, it's still a fun fact that uh, Nicolas Cage purchased twin plots here in, in 2010 and then built this pyramid over them, uh, which is where he's planning to be buried. So uh, Nick Cage was actually born Nicholas Kim Cop Coppola, not Coppola, Coppola, on January 7th, 1964 in Long Beach, California um, to Corey choreographer Joy Vogsland and literature professor August Coppola. Uh, he is actually the nephew of film director Francis Ford Coppola, but changed his name because uh, he wanted to make it on his own. He wanted to distance himself from that connection. And more interestingly than, than just the pyramid tomb is the fact that Nicolas Cage is known for his extravagant spending habits and few purchases could possibly top this one. In uh, 2007, he bought, he won at an auction. Uh, and when I say won, that is paid $276,000 for a Tyrannosaurus skull. However, what Nick Cage did not realize is that the skull had actually been stolen from the Gobi Desert. He was contacted in 2014 by the Department of Homeland Security, and he agreed to hand it over so the dinosaur skull could be returned. So, rightly, you should be asking yourselves at this point, uh, what does any of this have to do with this class? <laughs> well, stay tuned, and, and maybe, if you're lucky, we'll find out. But, um, otherwise, I am moving on to our next topic, which is uh, really at the heart of uh, the lesson plan for today. So I ask, what is an information system? This is another one of those slides, as are the several uh, next slides that are coming up. Um, uh, slides that work much better uh, when you actually have an audience, a, a class full of, of people uh, who can interact uh, with this. So I would ask to the class, what is an information system? Get some feedback. So think to yourself as you are watching this and hearing this, what is an information system? But before you answer, I want to ask actually, what is information? In order to 
properly and, and fully look at what is an information system, um, I want us to step back. And, and today's lesson is really about orienting ourselves um, with some, some background details uh, so we can proceed through the semester um, learning about um, business systems analysis and design. Um, but we really need to make sure we have a, a common understanding uh, of some of the basics. So what is information is key in a class where you're learning about information systems in a program designed for information systems. Um, so this question is one that I'd like to ask because the answer is, is not always obvious and or clear. So again, this would work way better in person. Is this information? Take a look at this. Think a little bit. Is this information? Yes or no? Is this information? These numbers are made up, but that's besides the point. Is this information? If it is information, how is it different from the slide that, that we just looked at? How about this? What do you think? Is, is this information? Mushroom is the UK's most liked pizza topping. And coincidentally, my most hated pizza topping next to anchovies, which hopefully most people um, don't like either. But uh, I, I am not a mushroom fan, not, not a fan of the mushrooms. So is this information, is the fact that I just shared with you that I do not like mushrooms information? Is this information, right? A little different than, than what we've just looked at. This is a screenshot from the spruce. 25 best birds to watch for in Texas, uh, including the buff-bellied hummingbird. Description of the hummingbird, picture of the hummingbird, and then we have the vermilion flycatcher and scissor-tailed flycatcher and um, lots of other birds that, that you can't see here on the screen. But more importantly is this information. What do you think? Yes? No? Well? I'm going to go ahead and assume that many people are, are, are jumping on the information bandwagon and saying, you know what, Dr. Mike, this is definitely information. Uh, what about this? Is this information? This, if you uh, take a look at any of the details here, provides um, more depth about the buff-bellied hummingbird, including migration, Nesting, diet, feeding habits. Is this information? Is this information data? Is it different from the previous slide? How about this? Is this information? And yes, you'll be able to hear if I get emails as I'm recording this, because why not? Is this information borrowed from Wikipedia about the buff-bellied hummingbird? How about this? Is this information? And this, again, I told you these slides work way better when, when you have a, an audience and you can get feedback on these things. So uh, I don't know what folks are thinking, but is this information? Be good to discuss this in class, <laughs> but we can't do that. Is this information? Screenshot from Google Maps from Fredonia, New York, uh, State University of New York at Fredonia, to be uh, specific, to Texas A&M University. Is this information, my friends? Is this information? This is a slide capture of my last slide in PowerPoint. So it's, it's that. Is this information? And obviously, I think folks can, can sort of see um, uh, maybe the point I'm trying to make here or, or illustrate um, that perhaps what is or what isn't information um, may not be as clear-cut, straightforward, black and white as, as some of us would like. So as part of this, um, I would then, I will then um, ask, so what is information, right? What is information and finally, um, since we've 
asked the question of a number of, of different samples is, is this information. Um, we're going to go with a working definition of information to uh, further refine as we go through um, our, our learning materials here. And this is based on a pretty uh, common definition uh, of information that pops up in a number of information systems textbooks. And that is information is data that is organized, processed, and or presented um, in some sort of way. Uh, I have the question marks around in some way um, as, as there's sometimes um, uh, sort of variations in, in that bit of the definition and what exactly that means. Uh, and then, of course, you see some other question marks here. In this definition of information, um, uh, which again is, is partial, it's incomplete, it's something we're, we're working on so we can refine it and have a stronger understanding. Uh, we're just starting with this idea that information are data organized, processed, and or presented in some way. But of course it's problematic because uh, this term data, we haven't defined that term. So we have to ask, of course, uh, what are data? So what is data? What do we mean by data, right? If we're going to define information using the term data in part, well, we have to know what, what data are. So a, a standard uh, and, and um, straightforward-ish defi definition of data um, that I like to use and, and is um, fairly consistent with definitions of data you, you've likely encountered um, in other classes and, and textbooks and such is that data are representations of stuff. Uh, and I have some examples coming up for you here in a short bit. Um, the term stuff being intentionally ambiguous. What do we mean by stuff? Facts, figures, ideas, right? Data as a representation of things, uh, just another word like stuff, intentionally ambiguous, but data are representations, but uh, do meet some particular criteria to really be classified and to really be designated as data. Number one, data are recorded. Data, and, and, and uh, this bit, as well as the last bullet point, um, are going to need some further clarification on our part. Raw and unorganized and are seemingly random. Data also tend to be simple, um, but I, I really want to focus on this raw, unorganized, and seemingly random bit. Um, this is where we start to get into some muddy waters uh, in terms of fact, uh, in terms of uh, people maybe not really understanding what we mean by that. So I, I want to show us an example. Here's an example of some data. Yay, data. Uh, we have some numbers as our example of data, and I've even labeled the example with the term data, so there could be no confusion. Um, 88, 72, 98, 92, 46, 100, 60, and 94, um, for those who aren't reading along at home. These are data. These are, these are representations of, of quantities, amounts, so to speak. And I can take that data, right? And I can do a little bit of work with that data. And this is sort of standard textbook stuff following along with the definitions of data and information as we're going to clarify and say, you know what? I can derive some information from this data and say the average numerical representation is 81.25. There's my information from my data. Done. End of day. Go home. Watch the football game. Um, so maybe, maybe not. Uh, I do want to uh, focus on that data part, right? Here's some data. Go through my numerical computation, and the average is also 81.25. Same thing with this set, and you guessed it. Um, these are the same data, just in a different order, right? It doesn't matter which order I have this data in. By themselves, they don't really mean anything, right? They're, they're 
raw, unorganized, seemingly random in the sense that I can seemingly have them in any order, um, and still derive the same information from it, right? Um, so let's look at another example. Here's some more sample data. This is uh, data about uh, coffee, right? So I have some uh, coffee names, the, the type of roast, the origin, the cost, right? So on, on their own, this data, um, you, you'll probably look at this and say, well, there, there is some meaning here. But I am um, uh, categorizing this as data, this table as data as I can put these coffees in a different order, right? And it's still the same data, right? So the data is still the same. Doesn't really matter which order I have it in. It, it's still capturing stuff. It's still representing these different coffees. And I can really put this in any sort of order and, and it really sort of seems random in, in that sense. All right. So uh, this is the end of part one of today's uh, online virtual lecture. Uh, please join me for part two. Um, take, feel free to take a little break, process this a little bit, uh, maybe watch your favorite Nicolas Cage movie, and then uh, we'll continue this discussion with part two. Thank you.